Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going through the brand new pack for Motion VFX, M Neo Vision. This is the ultimate toolkit filled with futuristic overlays and effects created to make your videos look like they've come straight out of a sci-fi movie. So let's dive into it. So once you've installed the pack via the M installer, you want to head over to the effects tab and search in M Neo Vision. Here you're gonna find the 60 elements split into seven different sections. We have the callouts and overlay effects from the effects tab, then the add-ons all the way down to the typography section from the titles, and then finally the five transitions at the bottom. To get started, we will start in the titles section going through the typography, as it's one of the biggest sections inside the entire pack. So I'll drag on MNEO Vision Title 1, and by default, this is what it looks like. Now, if you're working on a 4K timeline, the first thing you'll want to do is hit this 4K quality box to ensure the quality and the sizing is correct. Next, we have these in and out points and these are going to control the animation when the layer starts and ends. Then diving into the tabs to really start to control this title, we have the content controls. And this is the overwrite control center, which allows you to manipulate the positioning of the title, the scale, and also the rotation. Now, if it gets to a ridiculous point like this, to reset it back to default, all you need to do is double click on the option name and it will snap right back. From here is when the titles will begin to differ depending on which one you're using. That's just due to the amount of components each one has. This title one has a counter, the main title, and then two subtitles. So diving into those tabs, the counter control, if we toggle that on and off, controls this counter in the top left. We have the ability to slide that positioning. We can change how many elements of the counter are here. So if you don't want the full hours, seconds, minutes, and frames, you can just toggle each one off and it will automatically adjust the title look. Then we can also set an offset. So if we don't want it to start from zero, we can then change the offset as if I was to toggle off this end point and go to the beginning, we can see it currently starts at zero, zero. But if I was to change this to 20, we're gonna see it starts from frame 20 instead. So going through these different options, you can see you have complete control to really customize this, whether it's the font, the color, the scale, tracking, and line spacing. And then following on from the counter, we do have these lines. So if I toggle this on and off, you can see where that's affecting. And then we have the exact same options there where we can adjust the positioning. We can also adjust the width, the height, the thickness and the spread of the lines. So you really have the ability to customize that. Then going into the actual titles, these work in the exact same way as your standard text box, where we can first toggle that on and off, choose what you want in the text box, changing the font, color, and all the other options. And it's the exact same for the subtitle one and subtitle two. Following on from that, we have the glow controls. And you won't really see this glow until you're using the animation. So if I toggle this back on and go halfway through the animation, we're gonna see this glow here. If I toggle that off, you can see it doesn't come on. When you're in the middle of the title, you won't really see the glow. So the glow is just affecting the animations that you do have from the top. And the final tab we have are the drop shadow controls. And this is going to allow your title to be more visible against brighter backgrounds. So all the titles work in a very similar way where it's super simple to customize and get that futuristic look. Some may have more tabs than others, but changing them all is the exact same. Now moving to the top of the title section into the add-ons. These are drag and drop graphics that are made up of specific icons that can better illustrate and tell your story. So whether that's a cube, this cool 3D text halo icon, or one of these selection tools to highlight a specific part of the frame. Next, we have the backgrounds, where we have seven designs that provide you with various patterns to put behind your text and graphics instead of using video. They again are drag and drop with editable tabs within the inspector. Then finally, the last sections of the titles tab are the logos, where you have these three pre-built animations that show up your logos in a super cool way. So to set this all up, the first thing I'll do is actually remove the background so we can still see the video we have behind. Next, to replace this Your Logo Here drop zone, we're gonna go into the logo controls, make sure logo is selected, then all you need to do is hit browse, search through your files and select your logo. Then once you've got your logo selected, that's pretty much it, it's good to go. However, if you do like the animation that this title gives, you can change this to a standard text just by choosing the text option here, and then you have the normal text controls that you would on your standard text box. So putting all these different elements together, you can really start to create some cool scenes that allow your videos to really stand out. Don't be afraid to stack multiple layers and various elements from the pack, but be aware they may start to slow down your machine, so you might have to start rendering out some of the effects to get that smooth playback. Moving over to the effects section, where we'll no longer be dragging the effects onto the timeline, but onto the clips directly. But something I like to do here is actually use adjustment layers and apply the effect directly to that. That way you have more control and there's no issues with timings. So the first thing I'll do is just add an adjustment layer onto the top of this frame. Then we'll dive through the callouts, which are great ways to label and highlight different parts of the image, especially when utilizing the tracking features within DaVinci Resolve. 
So diving into call out six, first thing I'll do is just hit this 4K quality box. And before I do get into modifying the title and the placement, I'll first get the tracking ready. So to do that, you'll want to hit this one button to open up the Fusion page. Now, if you aren't too comfortable inside the Fusion tab, don't be alarmed, this is super simple. So the first thing we're gonna do is just space out these tabs a bit more. Then with the Media One node selected, we're gonna search for a tracker node. And to do that, you're gonna hit Shift Spacebar. Now this node could land anywhere depending on the spacing you have in the nodes, but you just wanna slide that in between these two. Then with this selected, you're going to hit one. That's gonna bring up another viewer on the left. From here, we're gonna use the IntelliTrack and just drag that to the point that we'd want to track. It does help if you have a high contrasting point. From here, you're gonna to head to the right inside the Inspector tab and this double arrow, you'll just hit that and let it do its work. Once it's tracked back and forth, you'll see all these white lines as well as a green line showing the path of the tracking point. From here, we'll need to attach the tracking point to the callout. So to do that, we'll click on the callout node, go into the callout controls. On center point, we're gonna right click, go to connect to, all the way down to the bottom where it says tracker one, IntelliTrack path, and then hit position. Now that that's done, you see the title is automatically jumped over. So if I go back to the edit page, the title here on the right, what I'm going to do is just adjust that positioning to the side. Let's put it over here. We'll increase the distance. Then once you have the positioning, you can then go into the rest of the tabs and start to customize similarly to how we did before in the title section. Now there's three different options under center point inside the callouts tab. We have linked angle, linked distance, and also static point. Now if I change this static point, nothing's going to happen because we currently have the link selected. And what that means is as the camera moves, the entire graphic is going to move with it. However, if I was to change this to static, and then I would adjust that positioning to match where we had it before, where I move this title, that's not going to move at all. You can see the line is moving, the point is moving, but where the title is, is not going to move. So you have that option to control whether you want the title to move along with the tracking point, or you can have the title static and it's just the line moving. So you have complete control to how you want it to look. From here, I'd probably get rid of this negative space by adding some titles and add-ons. The next section of the overlay effects are split into two different types. The first places your footage inside a placeholder on the screen. And this is a great way to show multiple pieces of footage at the same time. So with this upper layer selected, I'll drag on this display effect. Then you can see we have this picture in picture mode. Adding one more clip above and using the HUD screen, we can do the same thing and then adjust this to making it a bit smaller and placing it in the bottom corner. And that's how easy it can be. If within the placeholder you'd like to manipulate the video, all you need to do is inside the media controls, you can adjust the position and that will move the video within without moving the entire placeholder. You can also adjust the mask and the mask is going to adjust this box size. So if I increase its width, you'll see it goes wider. Decreasing it does the same thing. So you really do have full control to be able to dial in the look that you're going for. And then you have the three other effects that are the digital scan, pixel grid, and the scan beam, all giving you these really unique futuristic looks. And finally, to finish off, we have these five transitions. These are super easy to use where you're dragging up the transitions between the clips and adjust the length of them by dragging this box here. Then the transition will automatically adjust to the length of time that you've made the box. And just like everything else in this video, you can fine tune and adjust the look of these inside the Inspector tab until you get your desired result. So I hope this overview has helped you better understand how to use the pack. Remember, if you have any questions at all, please drop them down in the comments below or head to the website at I've been JC, and this has been your DaVinci Resolve overview for M Neovision. See you in the next one.